Today is live. I'm Chef AJ, and we have another fabulous chef for you today. I know that many of you say, we don't want to just have cooking demos. We want to have interviews too. Well, these cooking demos are also interviews because usually the people that have, are cooking have a story, like everyone has a story. And today is no exception. She has a fabulous weight loss story of 40 pounds, but she's going to be making some amazing recipes, including burrito lettuce cups. She's going to be making some orange bliss balls and a tomato salsa. And we're doing it a little bit later today because she's all the way in New Zealand and it's very early in the morning there and her name is Chelsea Cullen. Welcome Chelsea, it's so nice to meet you. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you for reaching out to me. I can already see you've done a lot of prep and it looks beautiful and I can't wait to see you cook and tell us your story of your uh, amazing weight loss and how you're now helping other people, especially as you say, moms lose weight. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's pretty crazy actually, because I was vegan for so many years and I was kind of like this overweight vegan and I was watching a lot of like YouTube videos of these very slim people who had like 6 million kids and eight pack abs. And I didn't understand why that I didn't look like them. I looked like I was eating McDonald's all the time. And it was only really when I got very desperate after my the birth, my second daughter, that I just, I was like, I have to do something different. I started looking at your channel. I found like a good channel that started talking about eating potatoes and uh, like calorie density. And I didn't really trust it at first, but I started putting it into practice and the weight for the first time really just started to come off without like as much effort. I always thought I had to do juice fast or like raw diets before that. And then it's just started to come off and I've just continually lost the weight. I'm the leader, leanest that I've ever been now after two kids and it's really not an effort to maintain it. And I eat as much food as I want and I eat delicious food every single day. I know, isn't it great? And that's what I was so impressed about you. I listen to every episode of your podcast and you really understand calorie density. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's the key. And it's interesting because even now I see so many vegans um, like who have like cooking shows. And I think the difference between you is that you really know how to use vegetables. And I would say I'm the same, like I love cooking with vegetables. And I always tell the girls in the membership that I run, like always just th be thinking, how can you add more vegetables? That's going to be not only what helps you lose weight, but it's also what's the most healthy thing for you to do on the planet is eating all of these like low calorie, non-starchy vegetables. Well, that's what I liked about your approach is that you didn't just eat starch, that you actually understood that you really have to eat vegetables to lower the calorie density and, and to be healthy. And that's what you did. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I, I have your book as well. And I've definitely like read it cover to cover and I refer to things sometimes. And yeah, it, I think like when that clicks, when you really understand that, then it's a game changer. And I have people that message me and they said, like, I found your Instagram. I started implementing some of the stuff you said I started eating more vegetables and I'm like I'm down four kilos in a month and I've got hope for the first time and it's like that's why I do this now because I had that hope from you and some others and now I can pass that on it's just it's exciting and it's just something that is so necessary because there's people so so desperate to lose weight and they're just struggling and they can't find how to do that especially as vegans and that shouldn't be the case as a vegan and I love how you simplify it. And it's not rocket science. And it's, you know, no. <laughs> I, I always think of my mentor, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, who says, you know, show me an overweight person and I'll show you someone unwilling. And he uses the word unwilling, not unable to eat enough vegetables. And that's basically yeah. the secret. And that's why, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say I don't like, I mean, if it works for you, do it. But when people just eat starch, yeah, you know, I guess it's okay, but, but you need to re if you're going to just eat anything, just eat vegetables. Cause that's what you're going to need to lose weight and to keep it off and to be healthy. Like I've interviewed Dr. Furman a few times, you know, he says, you know, if you don't love vegetables, you better live close to a hospital. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. And I think it's really true. And it's important that people understand how it works. And like, I always say like your starting point is your ceiling. Like if you're not losing weight at your starting point, your goal is to lower the calories that you're eating now it's not to just like eat exactly like someone else so that's where veggies are so important like if you're not adding all the veggies add that in and it's going to lower the calories of what you're doing and i think being able to understand that means that it's not like a one size fits all program but you get the science of it so you can apply it for your specific situation 
Nice. Well, what I love about the fact is that you're talking about it, but I see a lot of vegetables in the background and we have a, already yes. have a question from Michelle. The name of your podcast is Lean with Plants, right? Lean with, yeah, Plants. Lean with Plants. And it's on uh, Spotify, Stitcher and Apple Podcasts. You can go have a listen. I'm a, I'm a little bit kind of like kooky and crazy. So if you're into that, then I think you'll like the podcast. Well, so what are you going to make first, Chelsea? All right. So I'm going to make some burritos and I love to do this in lettuce cups. And so you've already kind of noticed this, but I wanted to point it out. So we've got like a really good mix here of non-starchy vegetables and then starchy vegetables and like some more of your fiber filled foods, which you need for that long term, like that long um, satiation. It's going to keep you full. So we've got beans and also brown rice in here. But I just cook with a nonstick pan. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I don't have any issue with it. So I'm just going to heat that up. So basically, what I've done is I've grated up a whole lot of, we call it courgette, zucchini here. And then this is all orange sweet potato. I've got some garlic, I've got a couple of onions, some tomato, some bell pepper, and some kale. And so what I do first is I just like uh, fry or saute up the um, onions with a little bit of water. You know, I love that you call zucchini cor courgette because if people tell <laughs> yeah. me they don't like zucchini, I'll say, oh, that's okay. Then just eat some courgette. Yeah, courgette is so good because it's incredibly low in calories. It's very, very versatile. It kind of takes on the flavor of anything that you're cooking with. You can eat a lot, like it's such a high water content vegetable. So if you're wanting to lose weight, like when zucchini is in season, I'm just eating tons of it because I love it. I like to eat a lot of food. And so, yeah, the more that I can eat, the better. And something like this is quite often, if you look at someone cooking something like burritos, like even vegan burritos, it's got things like TVP. So that's like a soy kind of protein. It's um, like it's had like a lot of water removed or it's got like a lot of beans uh, it's got like brown rice, maybe even things like walnuts and a lot of that stuff, like not unhealthy, but high in calories. And then you're going to have it with like wraps and vegan aioli and guacamole. So you can very easily, I'm going to show you a little bit later how you can easily add on so, so many calories that aren't necessary, <clears throat> but just by making sure that a lot of what's in this dish is vegetables, you're lowering the calorie density and you're, you're actually safeguarding yourself that you can't really overeat on this because a satisfying meal is going to come out around about like 500, maybe 600 calories, um, depending on what you put with it. But that's right on target for most women to be wanting to lose weight. As one of three meals with some snacks. Looks amazing. <laughs> Just cook that up. I'm, I, I've watched some of your videos, um, Chef AJ, where you just are throwing things in. And that's actually how I like to cook as well. So actually getting recipes, I'm a little bit like, mm, what did I put in there? Well, well mo you know, most people that I talk to that are chefs don't measure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we pour, right? Yep. And then we taste. Yeah. Uh, I'm totally the same. I, I, I work in a cafe as my job and I just... I, I can't re recreate anything really. I just pour it all in. What do you do in the cafe? Are you the sh are you the cook or the chef there? Yeah, I am the chef. Um, unfortunately, it's not actually a vegan cafe. Like I, I'm, I would like to be doing this full time, and I, I hope that I will be one day. Um, yeah, I. My husband actually has multiple sclerosis, so. Um, that's the reason that I ended up going to work. He's not, he's unfortunately not able to work anymore. Um, that's another reason that we're kind of like on a plant-based diet. And I think that it's helped to slow the progression of his diet, uh, his diagnosis. But um, yeah, so it's kind of like an interesting situation for our family as well. So I'm just going to add, I'm just going to get something to add a little bit of water. I forgot to do that. Absolutely. Isn't she adorable, you guys? Hey, so we, we have four cooking demos this week, meaning week starting on Monday through Sunday and three interviews. And I have like the most famous person in the plant-based world as a guest Friday. You're going to have to wait to see who that is, though. <laughs> is it Mike Greer? <laughs> Well, actually, okay, so maybe the second most, he's in the top three, but but my, I think I have Michael Greger next week. All right, I'll just tell you, it's oh, really? Colin, it, I'll tell you who it is, it's Colin Campbell. 
Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And then his daughter-in-law, Kim Campbell, will be on tomorrow at 11 doing a cooking demo. Oh, that's crazy. I, I never thought that if you'd have told me that I would be here doing an interview with you like six months ago, I would have, I would have been like, I'll just crack it out. I think that's probably my book. book. And yeah, so it's just funny that it's kind of coming full circle. Like you're teaching me and all that impact that you have on YouTube. And now I'm able to help women like my own age and work with people who have been vegan for a while. So it's, it's just kind of crazy. It's crazy how that happens. Well, now that I'm 60, I've got to pass the torch to somebody that understands calorie density <laughs> and that just, isn't afraid of starch. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, that's the thing that I notice people do most is that they, like, they either eat so many vegetables and they eat completely in that starch, or they can just focus like, on just on potatoes. And it's like, it's that kind of happy marriage where you're eating enough volume so you're feeling full you're getting the nutrition of um, all the vegetables but you're also feeling full from the starches and the fiber filled foods you can't do one or the other i also loved in your podcast how you really understood the importance of environment oh yeah yeah that's, it's something i think is really overlooked because we're all just trying to like willpower ourselves basically like you say out of addiction or at least the thing the fact that these high calorie vegan foods are just so hyper stimulating and so if you're if you've got jelly beans on the counter if you've got these things that you open your fridge and there's cookies there like not only are you reminding yourself constantly that's there for me to eat when i'm ready for it but it's also just it's hard to point in your day you're Hello, I'm husband. Kids, I'm fed up. <laughs> that just went on your husband. People are saying the sound is a little choppy, but I'm guessing it's because oh, you're all the it? way in. You're probably because you're all the way in New Zealand. Yeah, it must. It must be because I'm in New Zealand. You just got to like listen really carefully. <laughs> well, lucky, luckily, it's a cooking demo, so that you can get just from watching. But yeah, we apologize, but realize that you know we're, this is this is Zoom and it, this yesterday's yeah. Zoom actually, yeah. Maybe I can get Nick to help. Nick, the sound's not too great, apparently. It, it's, it says that they're saying the audio is bad and the words are a little bit choppy. Yeah. I can hear okay. you, but, you know, I, I'm wearing I'm wearing your phones and I can hear you really good. Yeah, she, oh, this right. is live from New Zealand, guys. So, yeah. Yeah, hi from New Zealand. Land of the long white cloud. Um, so, okay, I've cooked up my onion now. I'm going to try and shout. So, I've got the onion kind of cooked up, browned a little bit, and now I'm going to put all of this in there just basically going to put everything up in there and scrape my hair actually I might leave it in. if i'm cooking with kids i'll normally put things like kale on like in the beginning so i can soften a bit because they they don't like who what kids like kale honestly um but if i'm just cooking for adults then i'll i'll put it right at the end because it's actually green vegetables like kale and like broccoli, they have something in them. I can't remember exactly what it's called. It starts with TH. I think it's like phycoloids. Oh, do you mean, thi oh, you mean thylakoids? Thylakoids. Thylakoids, yeah, thylakoids. And so they actually, after a little bit of cooking, you'll notice like it goes greener and it's actually better for you. But um, you don't want to cook greens preferably too much. But like Jeff AJ says, and my green. Everyone says, like, any way that you're actually going to eat, eat your vegetables. I mean, that's way to eat broccoli a little bit more. I mean, I don't like raw broccoli, so I cook my broccoli a little bit more. And, uh, yeah, so don't get caught up, like Chef AJ says all the time as well. Like, don't major in minor things. Eat your veggies. I'm going to put on my tomato. So I've, got, I've given you the recipe, but basically it was about three or four um, braised up orange sweet potatoes. So, um, about the same of courgettes with zucchini and then about four tomatoes and two capsicum which is bell pepper for you guys and this makes a lot of food as well it's gonna cook down a little bit but it would make enough for depending on who you are for about four normal people So 
So yeah, capsicum is red pepper, courgette is zucchini. What other strange words do you have for our produce? Well, we call, um, we call, call sweet potato kumra. So all sweet potato is some kind of kumra. And the one that's most common for us here is actually um, the Japanese sweet potato. That's our kind of regular red kumra. Um, but yeah, it's very, very easy to get out here. We've got lots of different varieties sweet potato, which is really cool and we can get it really, really cheap because it's grown locally. That's great. Yeah, so sorry, guys. We're, you know, we're doing the best we can. Even if I had to get in line right now for Zoom customer service, they said the wait is over an hour and the broadcast will be over. So we can either deal with it or I could say goodbye, but I'm not going to do that because I can just learn from watching as well. <laughs> So, um, so we have a question from Gina. Where did you learn about calorie density and thylakoids? Oh, okay. So I first started learning about calorie density basically from watching Chef AJ's videos. Um, at the start of my kind of like new weight loss story, because I've, I've had a lot of weight loss stories. I've had a lot of unsustainable weight loss um, over the course of being vegan. But um, I, I found out about doing potato reset and I bought the book, the ebook that is written by um, Janine Elder, um, Potato Wisdom on YouTube. But so I did that. I started eating a lot more potatoes. I added in a lot of vegetables. So I saw it firsthand. And then I also just, I was watching all of these videos of Chef AJ's where she's got like the little jars and kind of comparing things. And it, it just started to make, sense to me because before that I was actually quite scared to eat cooked food like I was scared to eat things like potatoes I was scared to have like orange or oatmeal for breakfast as well because I thought like oh I'll, I'll gain weight if I eat that kind of thing I didn't realize it was overall calories um and then since then I've I've just done a lot of reading I've like I've watched a lot of YouTube videos my from my favorite books uh, my favorite book is probably Car Not to Diet by Michael Greger and I kind of use that as a little bit of a textbook with a lot of the stuff that I do for the girls in my membership as well. Um, yeah, really, really informative book that talks a bit about calorie density in there and thylakoids in there as well. So I really recommend that book. Fabulous book. Nice. Je um, Maureen says, what veggies are in your pot right now? So right now, can you see, I'll see, can you see that? Yep. So we've got a good mix of there in there of orange sweet potato, um courgette or zucchini there's some tomato in there and onion and garlic it so if you want to make veggies taste good you always got to add onion and garlic like I'm, i feel very sorry for people that can't eat onion and garlic you know, that's what I say to all the chefs. Everything starts with an onion lm says yeah. how do you get to your podcast i listen to it on itunes yeah you can pretty much anywhere that podcasts I have like you, you'll be able to find it there um, just search lean with plants Spotify Apple podcasts Stitcher right. it's kind of all over Stephen says he's got 99 problems and a bit of choppy audio is not one of them thank you so much I'm always support it <laughs> Monica wants to know what you yes that's my puppy barking and Monica says what did you eat to lose weight 40 I, I, I ate a lot of vegetables so I probably eat about like four heads of broccoli a day at least like I try and kind of structure it so that I'm eating about like a pound of veggies at my lunch and my dinner and so I don't need to weigh that out now like I did a little bit in the beginning just to kind of know what that looked like but my thought process when I'm cooking and you'll see in this as well like this is this is all vegetables in this pot right now like the veggie is the main event so that was what shifted for me was before like the veggie was like your little wilted broccoli on the side. Now, like it's the kind of, it's the rice or it's the beans that are mixed through or it's like the whole grains in a soup. That's where I'm getting the bulk of my calories, but the bulk of my volume of my food, the bulk of my plate is actually coming from vegetables now. So before I ate a ton of fruit, I, I kind of come from like the high fruit, high raw kind of um way of eating so I was eating like a lot of raw juices um high calorie foods that I at the time I didn't realize very very high calorie not very filling like very big big smoothies and things like that 
So for me, it was switching from a lot less fruit to a lot more vegetables and then also cutting out things like coconut cream. I didn't really cook with oil before, but yeah, that was a big one. Cut out of coconut cream, stop using as many nuts. I still use nuts, but I use them very, very sparingly um, and not, not every day as well. So, and then being a lot more consistent, like eating bigger volumes of food and understanding that it was overall calories as opposed to you have to be 100% raw to lose weight, which is, it's not based in science, it's just based in fear that you have to be so, so perfect with your diet. And then I, when I understood that, I realized, okay, if I do go off plan, if I do mark up, it's not the end of the world. Like I don't have to beat myself up for that. I just got to get back. So it was like much less of a kind of all in, all out mindset. It was just, I'll do the best I can in any situation. So I'm a lot more consistent now than I have ever been in my life. And I'm able to do that because it's it's not something that's based on fear for me. Yep. And they're asking, you don't have to show this right now, Chels, because I know you're busy cooking, but at some point show your before picture because they want to know how yeah. much weight you lost. And there's a question if this way of eating is, is helping your husband's MS at all. Well, <clears throat> the thing with his MS, he's, he was diagnosed with primary progressive uh, about six years ago. Um, and the progression of that is normally very, very quick. So he has... He has seen like a lot of progression, but it's been relatively slow. Like we, we have to follow the most relevant science. The most up-to-date information that we have is that a plant-based diet, a low fat plant-based diet is the best thing that helps MS. Um, but it's not, it's not necessarily a magic pill. And that's the thing that people have to understand that like you do the best you can, but it's, it's not necessarily going to like fix all your problems. So he still, he still has MS. He, um, yeah, he still has progression with that, but we're doing the best we can. And yeah. I'm so, so sorry. Is, ha, ha, yeah. Has, has anyone, have, have you talked to anyone like Dr. Goldhammer or I, I can't remember where Dr. Greg Fitzgerald, the, the fasting doctor I, is, if he's in New Zealand or Australia, okay. but does, does fasting ever help with MS or is it not I'm, something? I'm, I'm not actually sure. Like I think Nick's looked into it a little bit. Um, yeah, like we haven't, we haven't really done a lot of kind of reaching out to people. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been like, it's quite been a bit of a stressful six years with that. Um, I think you, you kind of get to a point where you're a little bit resigned. Um, not just in the fact that really you can't control life. Like we're Christians, we believe like you, you have to just, in a way, give it to God and say, whatever happens, like we're going to trust you anyway. We're going to trust you with our lives. And so that's what we do, but also trying to do the best we can. Like if new stuff comes up, we're definitely looking into it. So I'm going to put these, I'm going to put these beans in now. So I just, I, I know. Thank, thank you, Chelsea. Cause everybody's like, where's the starch? Where's the starch? Guys, yeah. chill no, out. It's coming. She's, it's she's, coming. Most Chelsea eats just like me. Most of her calories come from starch, but, but she yeah. said the volume, the meaning the amount comes from vegetables. So yeah, starch so is coming. This, I'll put this here so you can see it. So I rinsed out um, 10 of beans. You've got to make sure you rinse out the fat juice. Please do that. And so I've got kidney beans here and I've got pinto beans as well. Sometimes I would put black beans in, it just depends on how much I want to make. And so I've also cooked up some rice. So this was a cup of um, uncooked brown rice. And what I just, the reason I like putting rice in here is it just makes it a bit more firm. Because if I use tin tomatoes, which you can, if tomatoes are expensive, then it goes a little bit soggy. So I'm just going to mix that in and now I'm going to season it. Because the other thing with the courgette is, or the zucchini is it's very watery. So you want something to kind of like soak up that water a little bit. But if you don't have courgette, that's the thing with this kind of recipe, use whatever you want, like grate up broccoli, grate up Brussels sprouts. You could, and if you don't have sweet potato, grate up some carrot or some potato like you can really do whatever you want use whatever beans cook them from scratch you do you i love it so that's looking pretty good i feel pretty hungry i'm just going to put all this rice in 
People say they hear children. You have two of them, right? Yes, I have, I have two little girls. But they're not, I don't think, they, I think they've left. Is the sound any better now? Oh, yes, it got better, yes. I didn't want to okay. say anything and jinx it. I've been, I've been, I've been secretly <laughs> praying here the whole time. So it got much better. So Nick, Nick put up my little podcast mic. So oh, um, what I'm going to do, sorry, I feel like I keep interrupting you. No, 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 please. This is your show. I'm just here to run the tech. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some seasonings and the best seasonings that you can use for anything Mexican themed is cumin, coriander, and then smoked paprika. Smoked paprika, in my opinion, is far more tasty than just regular paprika. So I'll probably put about two tablespoons of each, but I'm just going to pour it in as I do. I've got a, an actual recipe that will be linked and some coriander and some smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is probably my favorite spice. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I love it. I use curry powder a lot. I put curry powder in everything. How long were you vegan before you learned cal the calorie density approach? Um, oh, so I was, I was kind of vegan off and on for a bit. I, I had a very, my first pregnancy was really, really rough. Like I had hyperemesis, so constant vomiting. I was very depressed. Nick had just been diagnosed with MS. So I just ate whatever I want. I, I just was like, I don't care about being vegan anymore. Um, and I was, yeah, I was in a very, very dark place, but all up in terms of mostly being vegan, probably about five or six years before I really understood it. And it frustrates me. I talk about this a lot on my podcast and my Instagram is that I just watched so many people online and I, it never made any sense to me because everything seemed contradicting. It was, you've got metabolic damage or you have to just eat fruit or you have to eat 4,000 calories of pasta or you have to just eat, I don't know. It, it was just so conflicting. It, none of it made any sense and I, I didn't get it. And now I'm talking to women and they're saying like, I'm exactly the same. Like I didn't understand it. And it's frustrating to me that really what we can understand in one sentence, weight loss is about eating less calories than you need is so complex that people don't understand this. Like that frustrates me a lot. Well, I, unless I said, I listen to every podcast and you understand that, yeah, you need to eat less calories to lose weight, but you don't eat to eat, need to eat less food. As a matter of fact, you can actually eat more yes. food. Yes. And there's a chapter in how not to diet by Michael Greger, which is, I think it's called eat seven pounds, lose seven pounds. And really like there's all these um, people groups, like the slimmest people groups, like they eat more volume of food. The average American eats like between three and four pounds of food. I'm personally eating at least six, probably seven pounds of food every day, but eating a lot less calories than most people. And the problem is, is that when you're eating any kind of processed food, even, even like relatively healthy processed food, like people think like whole wheat bread or um, like things like um, peanut butter and stuff like that, it's still so, so high in calories that you can easily go over your calorie requirements especially as a woman, as a woman, because we don't actually need that many calories compared to the abundance that is being, that is out there that is being produced. I think it's like per person, um, it's like maybe about 4,000 calories being produced by like the food industries a day per person, which is far more than what we need. Um, most women need about like 2,400. That's the average amount of calories that most women will need to maintain their weight. Oh so God. if you think to be in a deficit, of say around 25%, you want to be eating about 1800 calories a day. And that's hard to do because it adds up so, so quickly. But if you're eating foods like this, you can eat until you're full and you'll be right on target to be able to lose weight. 
Well, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I mean, some of us like women that are older, like myself that have hypothyroidism that are menopausal, we don't get 2,400 calories a day. I get only mm. 1,900. And the only way I wow. can do that and still eat six pounds of food like you is to eat three pounds of starch, four pounds of vegetables and a pound of fruit and bam, every day, 1,900 calories, six pounds of food. I'm satisfied. I'm stuffed because you, you mentioned in your podcast about the metabolic disadvantage. You understood that calorie penalty that happens when you lose weight. You yeah. just need less calories. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the sad thing about it. But something I find really interesting is that so many people I talk to, they get shocked when I say numbers like 1800, 1900 calories that you will probably, especially if you're overweight, like if you've got 40 pounds to lose, uh, to lose you're probably going to lose weight eating 1900 calories a day. But the thing is people don't understand is that they're not consistent. So even if you're tracking your calories, if you're someone that has at like a past of calorie count and you'll be most people are trying to eat around 1200 1500 calories but then they're doing like these big 3000 4000 calorie binges on the weekend and that's why they're not losing weight because their average is higher than their maintenance calories they're probably even gaining weight so consistency at that number is so so key and you can really only achieve that when you're not feeling hungry because you can't fight hunger for long like no one can outwill like hunger, like think about people in concentration camps, people in like prisons, what people will do when they are hungry. Like people sell their kids when they're hungry. Like you can't fight that forever. You got to work with it. I got a few questions for you. First of all, Gina said you're like a mini me, meaning me. So that's a compliment to, to you or to me. Well, one of us, but thank you. I'll take that either way. And uh, so Gina, Gina Rose wants to know how long was your weight loss journey? Oh, people love this. Um, so I started losing weight relatively quickly in the beginning. I lost about eight pounds in the first month. And that's when I did like a potato and a veggie only diet. When I started adding in more like grains and beans and fruit again into my diet, that slowed to about four pounds a month. And then that lasted for about three months. And then after that, it slowed a lot more, probably about two pounds every couple of months. And then in the last year, cause I've, I've, I started my weight loss journey about two years ago. Um, so I have lost a little bit more in the past year, probably about two, three, four pounds in the past year. And I, I think like I'm slowly losing like a little bit more body fat. I don't need to lose much. Like I, I'd like to get a little, I'd like to get abs if I'm honest, but um, like I'm, I don't, I'm not enough to, to eat less than I, than I want to. So if it happens, it happens. Um, yeah, slowly losing a little bit of body fat, but I'm also more relaxed with my diet now. Like I eat, I definitely eat like as much food as I want. Um, yeah, so about two years, if that's like the, kind of like the short answer. Judy wants to know if you have a cookbook. I have an ebook, but I don't sell the ebook because I personally, I don't think ebooks change lives. So I have, I have a program, which is like a monthly membership uh, where people can go and they, it's like a course. It's basically like school about calorie density because I want people to be able to understand this. It's not just following someone's recipe. It's knowing how can you make food that you love? How can you work with your own environment and your kids and all of your own specific needs to really eat in a way that's going to help you lose weight because me eating, I, I eat the way I want to eat. I eat the food that is available to me. So the ebook is like, it's great. It's got good recipes in there, but you really need to understand how this works for it to be transformative for life. So that, that I have that with the membership that I run, but I don't sell it separately. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. So I'm just going to, this is being kind of cooking away. So I'm just going to put a few more little things in there. I'm going to put a little bit, this is my snazzy container, but I'm just going to put a little bit of veggie stock. So this one does have a little bit of salt in it, but you definitely don't have to add that if you are um, like completely salt free. And I'm going to put one more thing in. So I also, I also found um, this kind of ketchup, but it's it's just sweetened by veggies. It's got no sugar, no salt. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in as well, just to give it that um, little bit of sweetness. 
lower fiber. And you can put chili in this as well. If you don't have kids, you can definitely put chili. And the other thing is if, you, if you're not like confident with seasonings, you can buy these like little um, like seasoning packs that just have like, like it might be like Mexican seasoning and you can find it without any flour, without any sugar, without any salt if you're looking for that as well, if you're not confident. So that's pretty much done. So I thought what I'd do is just show you how I make <clears throat> this little salsa and then how I would put these two together to make a delicious lettuce cup. That sounds amazing. Cool. Don't forget at some point to show us the uh, your before picture. Yeah, I, I will do that now actually. I'll show you my before picture right now. So I just you gotta remember, like you told me, I gotta remember to talk so that people can actually see it. Let me just find this. Um, Okay, so this this is my before picture. I think this is my actually have been during. So I was never like really, really overweight um, compared to a lot of people. But yeah, I'm about 40, yeah, definitely about like 40 pounds lighter now, a lot more, like very, very flat stomach, pretty lean. I gained a lot of muscle <clears throat> as well. Like I started weight training. Um, but yeah, I lost it, wasn't I didn't lose weight from working out, I lost weight from Calorie density and understanding how that works. All right. That's so, um, great. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get set up to cook this, make up this um, pasta. Where, they, there's a question, where specifically in New Zealand do you live? Um, I live in a little town called Whangarei, which is in, we, we call it the winterless north of New Zealand. But it's, it's freaking cold now. It's, for me, it's cold. We don't have very good heating here. Most people don't have, like, heating in their home. We just have fires and stuff. We don't have a fire. So I, I don't like winter at all. I'm not a fan of winter. You should, come where, you should come where I live. I don't think it's ever gotten below 90. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I, gonna... would, I would love that. I'll come for a visit. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, LM says, how many vegetables and how much starch do you eat per day? I, me, it's about three to four pounds vegetables and about three pounds of starch. Yeah, I, I probably eat about four pounds of vegetables and then probably about three pounds of starch. Yep. Yeah, it's probably about that. I like to eat a lot of food. So I'm going to make this salsa very, very easy. You just need some tomato, just chop it up. Now, so where you live, it's tomato because here it's tomato. Yeah, tomato. <laughs> yeah, yeah tomato. If you're making this, you have to say tomato like me. Otherwise, it won't work. That's cute. Adina Marie says, how much overt fat do you eat like avocados, nuts, seeds, olives, and tofu? Um. I don't eat much. I definitely do eat it. So I have flax every day. I have about a tablespoon of ground flax on my oatmeal in the morning. Um, I have tofu occasionally, but it's, it's a side. It's not like, it's not the main event of my meal. It would probably be like a quarter of an avocado or like a few blended nuts. Like if I'm, if I'm adding nuts to a sauce, which I wouldn't normally do, um, I actually measure them. So I will probably measure out like 20 grams or 30 grams of nuts um, into a sauce that would be for the whole family. So I don't eat a lot of overt fats at all, personally. Um, yeah, I just find it it's easier for me to um, maintain my weight when I'm not eating a lot of nuts. And it's not that nuts aren't good for you, but um, I just I just don't. I don't need a lot of nuts in my diet. Well, I appreciate you saying that because I have none in my diet and I know yeah. I, I could not lose any weight when I <clears> eat <throat> any fat. And I know the minute I right. put it back in, it just, that's the other thing I find that people, they'll do something to lose weight, but then they won't do it to maintain their weight loss. And they're mm. wondering like, well, why can't I eat peanut butter now? I've lost weight. Well, if you yeah. can't eat it while you lose weight, you're not going to be able to eat it to maintain your weight loss. That's for sure. Yeah, and like you become a smaller person, so you need less calories. It's very likely that the calories that you need to lose weight in the, in the beginning, 
they become your maintenance calories. So you can't go back because you're not, you're not the same person anymore. It's like a big car versus a small car. Big Texas truck needs a lot of fuel to run. I'm waving a knife around. But then you think like a little tiny, we've got like a little Honda Jazz, like a little itty bitty granny car doesn't need much fuel. So you, when you're that little bitty car, you can't eat, you can't eat like the, what the truck needs. You have to, you have to be eating the same way as well. And like, this is what I always tell people on my Instagram and the podcast and the membership that I run, like in the one-on-one coaching that I do, that you, what's really, really important is that you are developing these habits that you're going to maintain for life. So that you adding in more vegetables into your diet, that that becoming like a habit is that's how you're going to be able to maintain your weight loss. But it's not so, so difficult. It's not so outside of your norm that you can't stick to it, but that you actually, you're used to doing it now. It's just how you operate. I don't even think about the fact that I eat more vegetables than probably 99.9% of the population. I just do it. And it's just a habit. You know, and I find it just, it's so good. And you know, people always say, oh, your skin. I mean, that's, that's my secret is, is the vegetables. Yeah. And if people, the, sorry, what was that? <laughs> it, 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 Judy wants to know what's the most popular dish at the cafe you work at? Oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. All right. Then we go to the next question. Are there a lot of, are, are you called a Kiwi too? Is that? You yes. Called? Yeah. We call oh. ourselves Kiwis. Do you know that you can actually eat the peel of the Kiwi? Michael Greger taught me that we were having really? dinner together and he was eating the Kiwi without peeling it and eating the stem of the strawberry. And on. so oh, if Michael Greger can do it. I can do it. So the, let's see the, um, are there a lot of other plant-based eaters where you live? It's growing here. It, it's pretty big. Like my whole family is vegan. Um, a lot of my friends are vegan. So yeah, I, I think it's growing. It's definitely becoming more prevalent here. It's quite easy. It's, we've got like vegan cafes. It's pretty easy to go out and get vegan food, but it's not necessarily going to be low calorie or healthy for you if you're eating out, unfortunately. So if I, if I eat out, I normally go to a Thai place because I can, I can ask for no oil and I can ask for more veggies. All right, so this salsa is really easy. Like I don't even think salsa needs a recipe, but I just put in some fresh tomato and some coriander and some red onion. And I'm gonna put some lime in. Lime just makes everything taste good. Mm, and coriander. I, yep, I agree about the lime for <laughs> sure. I think coriander is quite polarizing though. Well, I think it's I think if somebody doesn't like cilantro, they may not like coriander. Well, I think it's the same thing. I think we just call it we just call it coriander here. But yeah, cilantro, same thing. So that's another that's another word that we say different. Oh, here's a fun question from Stephanie. You mentioned you have hey. two little, you mentioned you have two little ones. Let us know how yes. old they are. How do you handle school lunches, parties, explaining to them this way of eating what other people might find it non-conventional? Oh, that's a really, really good question. I have so many thoughts on that. So the girls currently don't go to school, um, but like we just, they eat how we eat. I, I always show like on my, like all, on all my channels, um, like how I make their meals higher in calories. So I add like hemp seeds if we're having like a soup. I don't cook different food for me. We all eat the same food in this house. So they have this, you see like meal that I made, I'm gonna bring it over. But like a meal like this, this has got tons of veggies. They, they don't even get a choice to eat that. So they are eating it, but I will add in some more hummus for them. I will put in avocado for them um, so that they're actually eating a higher calorie meal. And then it's just, it's just normal. Like they don't really have any reference of the fact that we eat differently to anyone else. Like they know that other people eat differently. I've explained to my oldest daughter about veganism. She's very, very adamantly vegan. And she always asks people when she goes out, is this vegan? Can I have this mom? Like she's really, really good with that. She's taken that on as her own thing, which I think is really cool. Um, sometimes people ask me like, how do you, like as a woman, how do you like teach your kids really like to have a good relationship with food in terms of um, like losing weight? Like, I talk about weight loss a lot. Like my whole channel and my, my all of my Instagram, everything I do online is about weight loss. 
Um, so people get worried about that. But the thing is, like, I'm not talking to my, I never have to say to my daughter, like, I feel fat. Like, she never sees me, like, super, super low on energy and, like, trying on jeans and feeling, like, frustrated. Like, she's not seeing that. Her mum has got energy. Her mum is, like, feels great about her body. And, like, I, I just don't even, I don't say to her anything. She doesn't even hear those words. Like, she doesn't hear the word, like, oh, that person is fat or this or that. And so I think, like, she's going to grow up with, like, a really positive, like, understanding of food and not even really need to worry about that. Yeah, I don't know if that answers it or not. Yeah. How old are your kids? So only five and two. Wow. Yeah. Pretty young. And you're pretty young. I could be your mum. <laughs> yeah, my mum my mom is uh, 60, I think. Oh, gosh. I feel so old. <laughs> but you, you look great, though. Thank I, you. I would be happy to look like that at 60. Uh -huh. I'm hoping I look like that. My mum looks pretty good, too. She's vegan. Does your mum live in New Zealand? Yeah, she does. That's okay, great. so I'm going to get a lettuce cup. I'm going to show you what I'm going to eat with this. I hope you can't see all these cords of all my computers. I have an idea. Why don't you just sneak only vegan stuff in your cafe? Like whatever they order, just bring in the vegan version. Don't tell them. <laughs> yeah, I should definitely try that. It's, yeah, it gets a bit hard with some of the things. But I, every time I'm there, I'm cooking more and more, more, and more vegan food. Um, and they love that. So, yeah. but one thing I did want to show you guys as well, I just put together, um, I just grabbed these. I, I normally don't even have things like this in my house. I just forget that it exists. But I bought this yesterday because I wanted to show you how easy it would be to buy or make a meal up like this. Like I said, this would probably be, if you ate like as many lettuce cups as you wanted, it would probably be work out to be about 500, 600 calories. But if you were to add, let's say you were to add a wrap with that, and then I'm going to find some more props. So you're making your meal, and for most of us, like, we probably have, like, two wraps, let's say. And then you probably have, like, half an avocado on both, and I had some of this in my fridge from who knows what. I don't actually eat this, but some vegan mayonnaise as well. So if you were to add one wrap, that's about 150 calories right there. If you were to add half an avocado onto that wrap with your burrito, that's another 150 calories. If you were to add some squirts of this, that's 100, potentially even 200 calories, depending on how much you put on. So you've taken something now and added 600 calories to it, which is crazy. And this is just a vessel. So you think if you had, sorry, you've added 300 calories to it. If you were to have two of these, if you were to recreate that again, you've potentially added 600 calories to your meal. So you could have had a meal that would have been about 500 calories, and now you've made it into a over a thousand calorie meal for little to no extra like satiation or um, like fullness. So I always use lettuce cups. Because this can be a very handy little vessel. You don't need a wrap. And what I do for my kids is I wrap it with um, paper towels so they can actually hold it. And then I like just put the paper towels down when they've got nuts at that part. This is really beautiful lettuce. I get it from my local markets. Sometimes it has slugs on it. I just pick them off. So you just get like a little lettuce cup like this. Put in some of this. You would put in your salsa. And then sometimes I would put like a little bit of guacamole or more likely a little bit of hummus. But okay, I'm gonna do a little taste test of this. That looks, that looks like a beautiful, delicious, satisfying meal. Yeah, and I would have so many of these. Like I would be just eating and eating and eating and eating as many as, many as I wanted. So I'm gonna try it. I don't, know if, I don't know if that's what you do. I don't know if you go around to try on your cooking show. But. Oh, no, I'd, I'd love for you to try it. And Beverly wants to know what the name of that lettuce is again. It looks like mm. what we call, um, butter lettuce here mm. i think it's called butter crunch that is so so good really really delicious with the lime yum <laughs> i can just stop it here and just eat and eat but That's i'm gonna okay. make some, <laughs> i'm gonna make something sweet for you guys as well so yeah but veggies is where it's at. Like if you're vegan and you're not losing weight, veggies, 
increase veggies, decrease those higher calorie foods like your coconut cream, your nut butters, um, and that's what's going to be what helps you lose weight because the the lower calorie food it actually displaces. Like we tend to eat a consistent volume of food, so if you deplace de some of that higher calorie food, and just how you saw how easy it was. Even just taking out something like this, which isn't necessarily super unhealthy, but it is it is processed. It does have the water removed. That's why it's higher in calories. Going on to lettuce cups, not having as much as nuts, right. nuts and seeds. And that's going to be how you lose weight. Fiber plus Thank water. You. Fiber plus water, baby. That's yes. The yeah. Fiber and water is where it's at. And people think that um, vegetables are high in fiber. They're actually not super high in fiber. Like they've got more fiber than um, processed food, but really the high fiber foods are like your starchier foods, like your beans and your whole grains um, and like potatoes and sweet potato. And fiber is what helps you keep full for a long period of time, like even 11 hours Later, it helps people to curb their appetite. So you want to be eating those fiber-rich foods. And that's another reason that now I don't really have smoothies anymore. If I do have fruit, I have it as a snack or I have it um, like as a bit of a dessert. But I will pretty much always have like oatmeal in the morning. Sometimes I'll have sweet potato and broccoli. I kind of have what I want. But it's that fiber that helps keep me full for a long period of time. Uh, they're asking what the container is that you're storing your lettuce in. And Facebook oh, yes. user, everybody that's asking for the recipes, after the live happens, it takes about an hour for me to be able to access it on YouTube and I will post the recipe, at least for the lettuce cups, because I have that one already in the, what's called the chat box or the show notes. Yeah, so I, this is like my like specific hack. I'm not someone who uses glass just because I don't, I don't have that at the moment. I've got plastic and I love these containers because I just put my lettuce in there. But I want to actually show you my fridge and my broccoli stores like i have so much broccoli in here like this whole thing when i get my broccoli i don't know if you can see that i just get my broccoli and i instantly break it up and put it in here so that it's always ready quickly for me to steam up and eat so i don't really ever have an excuse like oh i can't eat vegetables because it's just ready and i've got two of these in here just massive amounts and they stack and they keep for ages. Not that broccoli lasts me for very long. <laughs> and yeah, really, I find that really, really handy actually. Okay, I'm going to turn this on. All right, so we're going to make something sweet. And I was going to make some kind of like chocolate, chocolatey orange oat. Um, bliss balls but I decided to actually instead I hope it's all right make a sweet potato mousse because it's a little bit it's a bit more whole foods it's like it's got a veggie in it so I thought that that would be a bit better and so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that got my food processor here it is, yeah it is a little bit noisy <laughs> might have to mute when I come to this part. So the thing that I, this just the little disclaimer that I want to make about making any kind of dessert, any kind of like sweet thing, it is going to be higher in calories. Like the best thing that you can have for a dessert while you're trying to lose weight is fruit. I mean, it's naturally sweet. It's naturally high in water. Anytime that you're baking some kind of like cookie or like even if it's as healthy as it can be, it's still going to be higher in calories. So this this is the same. This is using going to be using sweet potato with a little bit of cocoa powder in there. Um, so it is higher in calories than just eating sweet potato or just eating fruit. But compared to any kind of vegan dessert that I've ever seen online, this is still a winner. So what I've done is I've roasted up some sweet potato and they go kind of all caramelly. This is like my favorite way to eat sweet potato and I love the Japanese sweet potato because it just goes like really, really caramelly and delicious. Do you have the Hanagyama in New Zealand? I'm not 
not sure because we have something that we call rose kumra and i'm wondering if it's the same i'm gonna get i'm gonna get it for you because i'm always trying to figure out if it's the same thing oh that would be great yeah i because and sometimes in the united states they're called jersey sweet potatoes or white sweet potatoes they're a little bit less sweet than the japanese but they're really okay. really good yeah so this is this is what we call a rose kumra it looks like an orange sweet potato on the outside but on the inside it's like this oh maybe that is our hand of yam it's delicious though right yeah this is one of my favorites it's it's so nice if you haven't had it you have to try it it's like next level let me get out the spoon sorry lm says what are your some of your go-to fiber foods but i think everything you eat has fiber everything i eat does have fiber but um my go-to is normally sweet potato <clears throat> i love sweet potato i eat a lot of sweet potato i find it a lot more satisfying than things like rice um personally i feel like i can i can quite easily eat a lot of rice and not and still feel hungry but i i also use like quite a lot of beans um i kind of just try and sprinkle them into most of my meals and then I'm, I'm pretty much always having oatmeal for breakfast as well. So oats, beans, sweet potato, and any kind of whole grain, really. Not so much. I don't really love quinoa. I don't really use quinoa. So I'm just going to put, you can see, it let's get this little skin. That's all right. You can get that out if you want. But look at that color in there. Like that's, that's going to be so delicious. I just, I would just eat this like this. What's nice is if you can actually cool this down in the fridge to start with, and then it will be like a cold kind of mousse once it's cooked up. But you... I, sorry. Uh, Vicky says, what are the sweet potatoes that are purple inside? There's two kinds that are purple inside, the Hawaiian and the Stokes. Do you guys have balsamic vinegar like the reduced ones in New Zealand? Um, I'm sure we do. I haven't really seen a lot of balsamic vinegars around. So oh, yeah, no that would be nice. Yeah, you no know, Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, huh? No, we don't. <laughs> we don't now, have, have you ever been to the United States? No, I haven't actually. I want to go. I really want to go. Wow. One day I'm planning on doing it. So my favorite part of sweet potato is actually normally the skin. So I'm not going to throw these out. I'll probably eat them later. <laughs> I know that sounds very strange, but they are just delicious. And I'm trying not to be a very messy cook because I normally am incredibly messy. Well, I am too. Maybe it's because we're both Aries. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's because I work at a cafe and I'm used to other people doing my dishes. <laughs> if only we had that at home huh? yeah if only at home i'm i'm just like very stingy with dishes yeah so and then what i'm going to put in do you mind getting a bit of um cocoa powder for me yeah so this is much better when it's cooled down a little bit i'm just going to put that crusty bit in the japanese sweet potatoes are sort of beige on the inside and a little bit of purple on the outside yes linda her job is raising her kids but she also cooks at a cafe yeah and i also do like i run this um vegan membership and i do a lot of stuff on social media so i'm pretty busy well you know what they say if you want something done ask a busy person <laughs> yeah that's very true okay so i'm gonna put a little bit of cocoa powder in this and you wouldn't have to put this in if you don't want to um it's just gonna give it that kind of like chocolatey kind of taste and it's basically going to be mainly sweetened by the sweet potato. Um, and I'm going to just go get one more thing. So hang tight. So guys, make sure you come back at tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time. We have Kim Campbell from Plant Pure Nation, and she's going to be making some amazing pancakes with a fruit sauce. And she's a wonderful chef, and I think you'll really like her demo. Then Wednesday and Thursday, we have interviews. There will be no cooking. And then Friday, Dr. Colin Campbell. And I don't know yet if he wants questions or if he's going to do a PowerPoint. Uh, Saturday, we have one of my chef mentors, my favorite yeah. chef, Eric Lachasseur. 
And then on Sunday, we have my teacher from culinary school, who's a fabulous chef in her own right, somewhere else now. I don't know where she's working. So we've got three interviews, four cooking demos this weekend. We've got a full week of packed interviews so next week and June. What is she making? She is making a dessert now, Cindy, with sweet potatoes and a little cocoa powder. Mm. And so I'm going to put a little bit of soy milk. You could use any kind of plant milk that you like just to kind of let it whiz up. And this is going to be much better if it is um, cold. I just didn't, I didn't do that. And then I'm putting a little bit of date syrup, which is just dates and water. That's all that's in it. Um, and again, you don't have to put this in. If you're trying to lose weight, this kind of stuff is not like ideal for weight loss, if we're honest. But it's much better than most vegan, like high calorie, any kind of like mousse that you could make that would have cashews or um, like tofu or anything like that in it. So it's still, it's still much better on the spectrum of things. It's probably like the best kind of dessert that you could eat, but for weight loss, best thing to eat for dessert would be fruit. And one thing that people don't realize as well with, um, with when you're baking food is that if you're using oats, for example, like oats are very, very healthy, but what do you do when you normally have oatmeal? you add double the water. So you've increased the amount of volume there and you've lowered the calorie density. Whereas when you're cooking something like cookies, you're not actually adding much water to that and you're using it, it's gonna be a lot more dry. So the calorie density of something like cookies, even though it's exactly the same ingredients, because it's minus the water it is gonna be higher in calories. And again, that doesn't mean that it's unhealthy for you. It doesn't mean that you can't have them, but you're going to be um, like fuller on a lot less calories if you're eating oatmeal versus like a baked oatmeal. I think it's important for people to understand that there is a difference there. Yeah. Yeah. People don't understand Chelsea when they eat rolled oats, sometimes they eat it just like muesli with a little bit of yeah. milk. It's 1800 calories a pound. If they cook it yeah. in water, it's 365 calories a pound. That's a huge difference in calorie it's density. A, it's a massive difference. And you think about something like, muesli which is dried it's like oats and then it's got nuts added and some kind of maple syrup and then it's actually dried out more so it's even higher in calories it's not the same um because you you just don't and that's the thing about flour as well brown rice flour is different to brown rice because you never eat raw rice but you would use a flour and make a cookie whereas you to eat to make that palatable you've got to add like two cups of water per one cup of of rice to normally eat a whole grain. So water's where it's at. If you want to lower the calorie density of something, think about what's, what's the water content of it. So I'm going to blend this up. I'm going to mute you while I do it because it's very, very loud. Oh, that's nice of her to mute us. If you guys were watching yesterday, sorry about the last five minutes with Dr. Esser. I don't know what happened with the sound there, but just to be safe, I'm wearing a headset now and I've got my microphone and I've got my pop filter. So Everything should be good on my end. Oh, I don't, I recommend oat groats, Kathy. I did a video last week about it. If you watch Weight Loss Wednesday, episode 176 on YouTube. And so there's a question, how does it help when you share these shows? What? Well, a few things, because when the numbers go up, I get better guests. Not that my guests haven't been great so far, but certain doctors that have like PR people, they want to see bigger numbers. And when you share it, then when other people are watching YouTube, like if you ever just watch something on YouTube and then it says recommended for you, that it helps YouTube show this video more to other people. So sharing really does help. And if you're watching from Facebook, you can do it in real time. And if you're watching from YouTube, I think there's a little button you can push, but I'm not sure because I've never really watched um, anything that I've shared on YouTube or even, uh, I know I watched Tammy Kramer live on YouTube, but she didn't access ask me to share it. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to pressure her to show her kids. My guess is maybe they went to school already because it's nine o'clock there. So yeah. A lot yeah they, they went out with my sisters because they're, they're very loud and they quite often hurt each other. So they would have been screaming. Linda Middlesworth wants to know where people get oat groats. So Linda, I've not seen them at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. We have a store here called Clark's. It's a nutrition store, a health food store. I get them there, but you can certainly get them on Amazon. And I will post a link right now to the ones that I have bought on Amazon in case anybody's interested. Uh, they're very good oat groats. They're, I, I think they taste a lot better than uh, either rolled or steel cut because you actually have to chew them. They don't, they don't make a porridge. You actually have to masticate them. So let me find that uh, 
Bob's Red Bill often makes them, but it, they're not always sold in stores. Yeah, so this is how the uh, the sweet potato mousse came out. Like it's, I could have blended it more, but I just, I couldn't be bothered. But it's very creamy. It's like a hot one at the moment. So it's going to be really nice. And then what I would put on that as like a little treat is like a few frozen raspberries would be really, really good on that. Ooh. So this is not super pretty. I'm like, yeah, I'm not like a super pretty cook when I'm cooking at home. Um, but I'm going to give this a little try with the berries. And you think like you could take something like this, especially if you chilled it at first, you could take this to like a potluck or an event or something and people wouldn't even notice. They would have no idea that you'd made this out of a vegetable. Mm. It was really, really good. I've been making this a little bit lately. Really delicious because the sweet potato gets all kind of caramelized and it brings out that flavor. So that's really, really good. Yummy. Well, you're adorable. I'm glad you reached out to me. And uh, maybe we'll get to meet one day. Who knows? Yeah, I would love that. I'd absolutely love that. You come here because you like you like it warm and it's very mm -hmm. warm here. Yeah, I think you oh, like I'm it keen. here. If you invited me to one of your events or one of your workshops, I will be there. I will be there. I'll <laughs> teach about calorie density as well. <laughs> You know, it's so funny. We had one this weekend that got canceled. So, um, it, you know, oh. cost, uh, and even though it wasn't our fault, it still cost a lot of money to not have it. So we're thinking of maybe yeah. doing things more online because then, you know, you don't have the travel, you don't have the food, you don't have the lodging. So, um, yes, the recipe will be shared, at least the recipe for the uh, the. Uh, lettuce cups because she sent it to me but guys it takes a little yeah. bit after a live for me to be able to edit it on youtube and then i will post it on youtube right below mm. in the description and and this recipe here is hardly even a recipe you just need sweet potatoes a little bit of cocoa powder and some basically some soy milk to make it right. to make it um blend very easy that's great so check out uh chelsea's podcast it's lean with plants you can get it on itunes check out her website it's her name chelseamay.com and you're adorable and i'm so glad that young people and people in other countries are understanding calorie density and, yes. and doing such a great work and i really appreciate that thank you it's been just like such an honor to be on with you and i've had a lot of fun well i'm so glad you did and you did a, a terrific job and thank you guys so much for watching come back tomorrow at 11 a.m when we'll have another wonderful cooking demo this time by kim campbell thanks again chelsea it was great meeting you yeah you too see ya bye, bye.